We're now going to take the ideas we've used for the qualitative analysis of simply supported structures and extend the idea now to statically indeterminate structures. And we're going to take We have a beam in this situation now where the support conditions are going to be where we fully fix both ends of the beam. And we're going to subject this beam to a UDL across the length of the beam. So we're going to begin with this example. By looking at the points of certainty that we know about this structure. So we know for definite, because of the support conditions, that we have no deflection in the y direction at the left hand side or at the right hand side. And that as a result of the loading, we also have a deflection in the middle. At the moment, these points of certainty only give us the same information that we knew when we had a simply supported beam. We're now going to look, and I'm going to use a thicker line for this, we're going to have a look what we know about the rotations of this beam. And for this beam, we know that the beam cannot rotate at the fixed end. We also know that the beam cannot rotate the right hand end because it's also fixed and for this case very special case we also know that the rotation of the beam must be zero we must have a horizontal deflection at the center of the beam so now we're going to use these bits of information as well as the deflection bits of information to draw our deflected shape So that's our sketch of the deflected shape. As we can see, as we're trying to draw that deflected shape, or if you try to draw it yourself on paper, it's actually quite difficult to draw a continuous line. And you'll have a slope that goes in that kind of direction. Then you have to change how you hold your hand on a piece of paper to draw the second part. So what that means is we've got points of inflection where the curvature changes direction. And this helps us in drawing the bending moment diagram. So we're also going to compare quickly what we'd expect the deflected shape to look like for a UDL. And so we would expect our UDL to look like this. So in order to get from this rotation here and here to the rotation we we're getting with the fixed in beam, we're going to expect that we have a moment to twist the beam around. And same on the right hand side. We need to apply a moment to the beam to make that happen. And that moment will come from the fixed support conditions. Okay, so, and I'm quickly just going to have a look at the deflected shape and note that we have tension on the top side here, tension on the top side here, and tension on the bottom side here. And we're going to use these bits of information to draw the bending moment diagram. So if we have an anti-clockwise moment here on the left hand side, right hand moment and a clockwise moment on the right hand side, that would give us a deflection that would go on the simply supported beam above the beam like that. And we can add the two deflections together to give us the deflection that we would get for the fixed in beam. 
the result of these moments is that we are expect and also we know that we have tension close to where the fixed boundary is means that we're going to get bending moments that are above the beam at the end conditions in between these bending moments we're going to have a quadratic variation of the bending moment because we have a UDL imparted on the beam. And the other thing we know is where we get a point of inflection, this is where the bending moment actually passes through the zero point, where the bending moment becomes zero. So we can use this information now and we can draw our bending moment diagram. Quadratic variation in between the known support bending moments. So this is what we'd expect our bending moment diagram to, to look like. Other points to note is that this value here between the maximum moment at the support and the maximum sagging moment is still the WL squared upon 8 that we would expect to see in a simply supported beam. And that leads us on to a very next important concept is that we consider the bending moment that we get from this indeterminate structure. We consider it as a summation of two determinate structures. So we can imagine the beam with just these moments applied at the ends and a simply supported beam with a UDL. So we're going to draw that. We can imagine that this that the original scenario fixed in beam with a UDL all the way across is identical to the summation of the two different scenarios, one where we have a moment sub a beam subjected to moments and let's get the directions correct again with these boundary conditions plus simply supported beam with a UDL upon it and in terms of bending moments that looks like is we would have a constant moment from these two n moments and we're going to call these let's call them n moments plus applied moments And the applied moment is our WL squared upon 8. Later on, we're going to show how you can calculate these moments or where you can find them readily, easily in textbooks. And they're generally referred to not just as end moments, but fixed end moments. And this becomes very useful later. So summing these two these two bending moments together is the bending moment we've just shown before. Positive bending moment, positive bending moment, and WL squared upon 8. So without knowing anything about 
how you can analyze statically indeterminate structures using qualitative analyses about what the deflected shape must look like and therefore what the reactions must look like can lead us to a simple way of determining what the bending moment diagram must be.